welcome back. In today's video, I'm gonna be adding some cabinets to the shop. Uh, I found these kitchen cabinets. You can see one here uh, on the side of the road. There was a set of four for free. For free? For free. For free? For free. So I loaded them in the truck and took them home and mounted this one so far. Um, using a French cleat system. If you don't know what that is, it's when you take a board and you rip it at a 45 degree angle. So you got two mating surfaces. You attach one to the wall, like so, and the other one to the cabinet, and then it just slides right in, holds nice and tight. The trick is I've got some space here that I need to account for. So uh, I've got this thickness at a pretty good uh, size for that. So let's get those mounted. But first I need to do some cleanup because these were in somebody else's kitchen and they were sitting on the side of the road. So let's do that. <laughs> Now it's time to start cutting this scrap board down to size. It doesn't really matter whether you want to cut length or width first. I'm choosing to cut length first by making a cross cut on the miter saw. You could also make a cross cut on the table saw with your miter gauge or cross cut sled, but if you have a cross cut sled then you're probably already stopped watching this video. If you don't have a table saw, you can do this with a circular saw or even a hand saw but the rest of the cuts are going to be easiest and most accurate if you have a table saw. Just a word about safety. When I'm making sawdust, or as I like to call it, man glitter, I always wear my face mask to keep the fine dust out of my lungs. When I'm working with spinning blades, I wear my safety glasses, and depending on how loud the machine is, I'll wear my hearing protection. And I recommend you do the same. The next cut will be ripping the board to width on the table saw. I want these pieces to be wide enough that they can easily hold a screw without splitting and the cleats need to be beefy enough to hold whatever kind of weight I'm going to be putting in these cabinets. You'll notice that I'm using a shop made push stick to keep downward pressure on the board and also an off cut to keep pressure against the fence as I move the piece through the blade. In both cases I'm keeping my fingers well away from the blade for obvious reasons. Here I'm changing out the zero clearance throat plate and replacing it with the stock throat plate that came with this rigid table saw. It has a wider opening so I can tilt the blade to make that 45 degree bevel cut. You certainly don't need to have the blade tilted to exactly 45 degrees to make French cleats. It would still work if you only set the blade at 50 degrees. But I have a digital angle finder, so why not? Now I'm just eyeballing where to set the fence so my cut is somewhere near the center of the board. This push block I'm using is called the gripper and it helps guide both halves all the way through the cut. It was at this point that I realized that I had forgotten to make another rip cut to make the boards the right thickness to take up this space above the drywall. If I didn't do this, the cleats would push the top of the cabinet away from the wall and it would tilt forward. So now I need to take these beveled pieces back to the table saw. 
It definitely would have been safer to just start over with a new board because 90 degree cuts are easier to control. But I decided to take a chance and trim down these boards that already had a beveled angle on them. The angle increases the chance that either my push stick or the workpiece itself could slip toward the blade and create a kickback situation. In general, you want your off cut to be on the outside of the blade, that is the side opposite the grip fence. However, if I had rotated this piece around so the off cut would be on the outside of the blade, the bevel on the board would have been angled toward the rip fence and I wouldn't have been able to maintain firm pressure toward the fence. I hope that makes sense. So instead, I set the fence so that the thin off cut would be between the blade and the fence. I knew that this would probably cause the thin piece to come back toward me and I was prepared for that. I made sure that I was standing off to the side so the loose piece wouldn't hit me and I also used a feather board in front of the blade to keep the work piece up against the fence. And as I predicted, the off cut did come back at me but luckily not too forcefully. I'm an unpaid amateur. Don't try this at home. Watch closely what happens to the piece next to the fence as I push the piece all the way through. So like I said, these are free cabinets. Um, cheaply made out of this fiberboard stuff. I'm not even really sure how they were attached. It looks like they were probably just screwed through the fiberboard from the back panel into the studs of the wall. But like I said, I've got this space to make up for above the drywall here. So I wanna uh, beef this up a little bit with some 5 8 inch plywood. I'm just gonna attach a strip here with glue and pocket holes. And then I'll have something nice and solid to attach these French cleats to. Let me know in the comments if you would like to see how I built this outfeed table. I got the design and hardware ideas from Colin Kinnett at Woodwork Web. He's another YouTube woodworker. This is a piece of shed siding left over from the lean-to that I built to cover the white oak slabs from a tree we cut down in 2020. You'll see more about those white oak slabs in future videos. I'm just ripping one section out of it here. And then we'll cut that down to size on the chop saw. As my friend Matt Outlaw says, pocket hole time. So we want to just divide this up evenly, um, maybe every four inches or so. This is 28 and a half inches wide and um, we'll probably go an inch from the end and then every four inches or so along the way. So mark that off on the top end so I can see it. These measurements aren't critical. You just want to get enough screws in there so it holds holds well. Almost it holds good. And then we're going to do two on the ends on each end. And if you have one of these, this is the Craig 4 um, pocket hole jig. You want to make sure that you've got your screw set to the proper depth. And once again, this is 5 8 of an inch. Yes. So you want your screw stop set at 5 and a half inch, or did I say 5 and a half? 5 8 Wow. I guess I need another cup of coffee. Um, 5 8 which it is already and you also want the depth of of this thing which raises and lowers 
all the way up to an inch and a half thickness. We have it down to five eighths. And let's get that. And when you're making holes, this thing spits out a lot of chips, so I'm going to hook it up to dust collection. Safety first. Okay, now we're going to glue these in with some pocket screws. These are inch and a quarter Craig screws. And we'll go ahead and load them up. A little glue on three sides. Um, back cardboard piece is a bit warped, so it's pushing this out. So I'm just gonna use some scrap board to push them down with some clamps on the back side. That works. It's sticking in a little bit here, but I'm not terribly concerned about that. And the Craig pocket hole jig comes with this long square drill bit to drive them in. Let's start in the middle. Not too tight because it's particle board. Don't want to blow through it. Now we take these off now. Ooh. Oh, you know what? Maybe I want to leave those on. There we go, now we gotta figure out where to attach these guys. Um, we need the, the cabinet one is going to be, um, this will be the wall and the cabinet will come down to meet it like that. So we're mounting this on the wall. I've already drawn a laser level line uh, on the, where I'm attaching it to but I got to figure out how high this is going to mount in order to get it to sit right. Now that I've driven these screws in, um, I, I didn't drive them all the way, but I realized I want to um, recess them so they're flush with the surface because they're going to be sitting up against the wall and I don't want the screw heads or anything else to push the cabinets away from the wall. 
So I'm going to countersink these holes in both the cabinet side and uh, the wall side with um, countersink um, bit. You can you can buy these um, just standalone um, to fit in your drill for um, to to countersink the hole after you've drilled a pilot hole, or you can buy these all-in-one um, tapered pilot hole screws that you that have an adjustable um, countersink on them. So I have this set that I've had since I started woodworking pretty much. Um, it's a little too big. The, the size, these bigger sizes I never use. I never use screws that big. Um, so I'm, I'm guessing there's probably a smaller set. I'm gonna have to look into that. But I'll just use the smallest one that I have to make these countersink holes. the drill. These are the same size so I'll get my depth right. I'm gonna make sure that I'm getting... yeah that'll be good the way it is. Otherwise these are adjustable and you can uh, use the allen wrench that comes with the kit to um, adjust the countersink so that there's not as much pilot hole being drilled um, and you just secure that down onto the, the drill bit. That's better. Oh, are you kidding me? Even with a pilot hole, the drill bit snapped off. Ah, that is unacceptable. Look at that. <laughs> that is not fair. Now I'm gonna put these screws in. Not all the way because I'm gonna add glue to. Okay, I'm gonna add some glue. All right, time to mount the bottom cleats to the wall. Okay, now I can mount these cleat, bottom cleats to the wall. I made a little mark over here where the end of the, the cabinet should go, and it's a half inch. So I'm gonna butt my cleat, bottom cleat up to that, and then still got that drill bit in there, so I gotta bash that in. Okay. And making sure we're level. Oops. That's fine. That looks pretty good. Ready to hang. Okay, let's see how we did. Oh, I can already tell we got a problem. Um, can't see the 
that very well. There we go. Yeah. Um, I don't know if we're going to be able to zoom in on this bubble, but we are off. This this side is low. I, so we could adjust the cleats or just put a shim in. I think that's what I'm going to opt for. I'm just going to put a little shim on this side, level it back up. And I think what's going to work for that is just some toothpicks. Let's see. Maybe about this many. Let's see how that works. shop and these are free cabinets if I was doing this in my kitchen uh, I would have paid a lot closer attention to how high everything was and be bang on level before attaching it but it is what it is that's looking better yeah we're between the lines I can live with that and even when it was not level, it wasn't enough to get a nickel to roll anyway. So I think we're calling that good. Um, for an added measure of um, security though, I am gonna go ahead and put some screws through the back here into the studs. I'm very confident in my screw placement in my drywall. It, they're, dead center on the studs because that's the way I built it so yeah I'm gonna add some screws through the back on both these cabinets because I don't know what I'm gonna be storing in here how heavy um, it should hold the way it is oh yeah we didn't give it a jiggle now how are we looking still between lines All right, now I can get rid of some of this mess and start tucking it away in these cabinets so that eventually I can get rid of that table and put something else there. Well, I would call that a success. I've got it hung. It's not perfect, um, but it serves the needs of my shop and I'm happy with it. it. Didn't cost me anything except a little bit of time and some scrap materials. So. My next project is going to be to put a box around the back of this uh, miter saw to um, help with dust collection. So you can look forward to that. Make sure you hit that bell icon to get notified when I make new videos. Thanks for watching. And until next time, be safe and love each other. And then I'll have something nice and solid to mount these, um, what do you call them? So um, I'm going to, um, there's a word for that, uh, countersink. Well, I would call that a six. Uh.